October was a difficult month. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Thanks to storms, flooding, an unexpectedly busy time at work, and trying to get two slightly dodgy vehicles MOT'd, I felt like I was just messing about and I wasn't really getting anything done. There just seemed to be no time left for making or editing videos either, so sorry about that. But never mind, here's what I've been up to with the 75. Okay, it's the final piece of the puzzle for the 75. I just need to replace the hockey stick shaped piece of fuel pipe underneath the car that goes to the fuel filter. That's leaking every time I start the car up. I can then take the car up the road, put it through its MOT. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll pass. Wish me luck. So, I managed to get the, the pipe off. This is the uh, fuel pump. This is the so-called hockey stick pipe because of the shape of it. And I've cut a bit off the end. That's why it was leaking, because the pipes all perished. So, um, hopefully, mm, it's still got some cracks in it, but we'll try it with a new, um, with a new clip and see, uh, see whether it stops leaking. The old clip was uh, being a little bit difficult, let's say, yeah. New clip, old pipe, but Fingers crossed. We'll see whether it leaks anymore. Let's start it up. Okay. Hooray! No leak. Woohoo! Yes, dry. It's dry, for now. I'm gonna check back on that later. Right, so, 75. Uh, whew, had a lot of problems. Obviously it's an old car, 1986. I had to go through a list of things to make sure that it was ready for its MOT to give it the best chance of passing. So, uh, the list was as follows. Uh, brakes, well, obviously a uh, fair bit of work needed to be done on the brakes. They worked, but they're not that brilliant. So I had to uh, take the, the wheels off, check the calipers, check all the, uh, all the lines, de-rust the, uh, the brake discs. They're now working up to a decent standard. Check the bushes, the bushes are okay. Some of them are new, some of them look a little bit older, but um, nevertheless, they all seem pretty good. So I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. Lights, well, uh, yeah, I think the front headlight aim is too low, uh, but the rest of the lights all seem to be working fine, which is unusual for an old Alpha. I have to say that the last MOT that it went through, which was in 2020, there were no advisories. So either the uh, garage was bribed or uh, the, uh, the guy who restored it previously had done a pretty decent job. Fuel tank, ugh expensive that was the probably most expensive part of this it was also the biggest pain in the rear um, getting the old tank out was fairly easy putting the new one in not so easy um, it was a two-man job you can see that in uh, one of my previous videos on this car but that's in it's uh, it's not leaking we'll see the pump leak, yeah, that was the bit with the, uh, the hockey stick shaped bit of pipe, which is apparently a big problem. You can't buy those anywhere else. Um, I believe that Kevin at EB Spares is working on that one. Hopefully fixed for now. Oil pressure sensor, mm, well, getting to that is a nightmare because it's buried right round at the back of the engine uh, in front of the, uh, the front firewall. Replacing it is going to be something that isn't high on my list of priorities. Not, not yet anyway. So we can wipe that one off as well. So the only thing left is the MOT. Fingers crossed, wish me luck. Oh, 
the new. Oh, one other thing, which was uh, something that my friend Adrian decided to add when he visited the garage the other day. Rust preventer, yeah. Hilarious, very, very funny. Oi, Dave, can you MOT the Alpha? Oh, no, an Alpha. Look at it. All square and nasty. Many unbearable hours later. So, the uh, 75 has uh, struck again. Uh, I got a retest because the only things that the car failed on was that the headlamp aim was too low and the rear driver's side brake lamp wasn't working so obviously that took me about a quarter of an hour to sort those out i'm uh, heading back to the test center now to uh, to get those addressed and then get the the mot signed off and uh, stopped off to get some fuel at the local petrol station and um, as I was driving away, I was thinking, mm, I think I can smell petrol. That's probably, you know, what happens in an old car. Uh, yes, it's, it's certainly what happens in this car because the leak that had been fixed is now not fixed again. So I've stopped halfway to the test center and had a look underneath and sure enough, petrol is drip, 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 drip from the same place. Uh, so I've had to cancel the retest and I'm going to have to turn around and go back to the garage and get underneath the car yet again and see uh, where it's coming from this time. So not very happy bunny at the moment, but um, you know, that's what old cars do to you, isn't it? See you in a minute. Ooh, how annoying. Come back to the unit, uh, driven all the way back and uh, the drip stopped. Can you believe it? So I'm trying to ring the garage now to uh, to get to get the retest put back in. Hopefully they can do it again today. Yes, T, the great British solution to any problem. now is sit around and wait till the garage calls me back. Fingers crossed I can get it back in today for a retest. Cheers. Yes, so the garage have just phoned me to say that um, they can squeeze me in in about half an hour. So I'm going to have to uh, get a move on. Okay, well, here we go again. Backwards and forwards. Up and down up and down like a bride's nighty, as the saying goes. Uh, sorry, not a very political correct saying. Uh, the garage just phoned me back to say that uh, they can fit me in. So here we go again. Hopefully not leaving a trail of hydrocarbons behind me. I've no doubt there'll be lots of bits and pieces on this car that aren't gonna work the way that they did when it left the factory. The non-cancelling indicators are one that I keep forgetting about. I'm gonna have to open the window because it's hot in here. Yes, and you've noticed that the window switches are up here in the roof, which is another one of the 75's peculiarities that uh, set it apart from a lot of other cars. <laughs> I'm getting a, a fair bit of attention in it too. It's a, it's a double take car. I'm driving past and people, people are looking and then going as if they can't quite believe their eyes. I'm not sure it's always, always in a good way or an envious way or a wow, look at that car. It's more of a what the beep is that right nearly there now so let's hope this goes well <laughs> look at this is an 
early Christmas tree going on here. Uh, what's going on with that? That's a three quarter full tank. Oh, oh, right. Okay. Moments later. Hooray, MOT is in the bag. Ta-da! There's a couple of advisories. Repair as soon as possible, brackets, minor defects. Indicator telltale inoperative. So basically the indicator light inside doesn't light up. Uh, monitor and repair if necessary, advisories. Seat belt webbing slightly damaged or frayed. That's this one here on the passenger side. Registration plate deteriorated but not likely to be misread. Why mention it then? Suspension arm corroded but not seriously weakened. Well, it's got a bit of surface corrosion, that's it. Oh, and the underbody is heavily undersealed, like that's a bad thing. Anyway, we're going to go and have a little spin now that we're all sorted. Try not to run over the cyclist. That seems to be cycling faster than I'm driving. A bit weird. Okay, so that was uh, a little bit more complicated than I was hoping it was going to be. Uh, but the point is, I now have a full MOT on my passenger seat and uh, the car's insured. It's road legal. I think the tyre pressures are okay. Should have checked them really. So here we go. Let's go for a little spin. Fingers crossed everything will be okay. It has a reputation amongst Alfisti as being one of the uh, one of the better handling old Alphas. Courtesy of the, the transaxle gearbox at the rear. I think probably the twin spark engine cars will be the best handling because Obviously, this this one has a has a 2.5 liter Busso V6, which is quite a bit heavier than a Twin Spark. Although the end, the exhaust note and the performance for me it wins out that particular equation. Oh, and right on cue, it's raining. Yeah, that's just fantastic. Well, at least the windscreen wipers work. I'll do a quick spin up a local bypass and see what she feels like. Ooh, there's quite a lot of vibration when you're accelerating hard. I wonder if that's the prop shaft. Ooh. Lots of vibration. The body rolls quite a lot which uh, I was already expecting, but the, um, yeah, the, it feels very neutral, which is great. It feels like you could push it quite a bit harder, but maybe that's uh, something I'll leave until I've got better tyres on and I've upgraded the suspension, but a set of Coney yellows and perhaps some springs to lower the car by an inch and a half, something like that. That should really help the handling. Put some decent tyres on it instead of the Chinese specials that are on it at the moment. Could be worse, I suppose. It could be 1986 tyres. Right, so I'm just going to spin around this roundabout and then go back. Oh, into third there without any crunching. Let's see if I can do it into second. <coughs> uh, that'll be... <laughs> That'll be, that'll be a no then. Oh. I don't know if you heard that, but the front tyres are also grating themselves on the body kit at full lock, which isn't is also not a good sound. Let's give it a bit of beans in fourth. Uh, 
getting a fair bit of vibration over 50 which I think Archie the guy I bought the car from did mention that the the prop shaft needed balancing so I'm guessing that's uh, that's what's causing that so no long motorway trips in the 75 for now especially if we're if we've got vibration from the prop shaft and the leaky fuel tank hey you know it's a it's nearly a 40 year old car the uh, the 2.5 Busso engine is pretty uh, low on torque so to get the best out of it you have to rev it um, you have to rev it a lot but obviously torque is the uh, is the driver's friend torque is the the stump pulling um, ability of the engine that designates its uh, its umph that's a, that's a technical term umph uh, spelt uh, o o m p h exclamation mark so i'm in fourth doing 40 miles an hour put my foot down it's very smooth it picks up nicely there's no hesitation there's no jerkiness it's just it's not that umphy umphy so it's a five speed gearbox um, I'm now on a, a long straight it's in fifth gear I'm doing 60 miles an hour and this the, the tachometer is reading 2600 rpm which is fairly fairly high um, so although I'd like a noisier exhaust to be able to hear the Busso revving away on longer journeys that might get a bit tiresome because of the fact that the gearbox is fairly low geared anyway it would be better with the 3 litre Busso wouldn't it uh, yeah decisions decisions I wonder whether I could speak to um, to that nice man Alex Jupe about what it would cost to rebuild this engine as a 3 litre hmm that's a that's an evil plan isn't it if ever I heard one oh temporary traffic lights don't we love those we love those they're our favorite thing to find on a nice drive out on a crisp autumn day get out of it one oh great they're digging up the road they're digging up the road of course of course they are come on come on it's an interesting car it's certainly it's certainly yeah uh, it's certainly quite good fun to drive it feels good it's one of those cars that reminds you just how far we've come in 40 years but you compare a car like this with a v6 from 1986 to a car like my uh, Julia Quadrifolio wow the, the Quadrifolio in contrast could well have been dropped into my driveway from a spaceship the differences are so profound so uh, sometimes when you get to my age you look upon cars from the 80s and 90s as fairly modern cars because you know you grew up with them but really when you get a, a, a dramatic contrast such as getting out of a 2023 Alpha Julia and getting into a 1986 Alpha 75 yeah there's some there's some pretty pretty eye-opening differences but there you go it's history on four wheels and I love it forget to like and subscribe and you can help support the Alphanut channel by hitting the buy me a coffee link down below. 
I'll be uh, giving a shout out in my next video to all the kind people who've supported the channel so far. Thank you very much everybody, it's much appreciated. Freshly grown water.